These are the solutions for chapter 9.1 written textbook homework. We'll start with the first problems, 9 and 10. They're skill-based problems asking you to find the critical value z alpha over 2. We talked about this in a previous uh, chapter, but now we're going to apply it. And so what a critical value is for number 9, it's related to a normal curve. And a critical value, you've answered this question before, we just asked it differently. A critical value, critical value for a confidence, a level of confidence 98%. What that means is your alpha equals 0 0.02, and that's the area, area in the tails of a confidence interval. So there's two-sided. A confidence interval can be is two-sided, and that in each side, we're looking for these values. That's what we're doing. We're finding a critical value. It's kind of helping us find the endpoints of a confidence interval, how wide we want to make the confidence interval. And so we're asked to find a critical value for, depending upon the level of confidence. And so now that we're looking for 98, that <clears throat> means alpha is 0 0.02. And in this case here, that means there's 0 0.01. This is what this alpha divided by 2 is. Alpha divided by 2 is 0 0.01 because we break that alpha into two pieces to go to each side of the tail. And to get this answer then, we're just looking for this value. So then we're looking for what z value right here would give us an area in the right tail of 0 0.01 or an area in the um, left tail of 0 0.01. And to answer that question, we go ahead and then um, we usually refer to this one right here. So we would go ahead and use StatCrunch to do that. We would open up the normal calculator. Me, and these are z scores, and so then I would just put 0 0.01 on this there, compute, and so you end up with 2.33 as your value for the first one. So your z alpha over 2 is 2.33, and so that was for number 9. For number 10, it's the same idea. The Alpha in this case is 0 0.08. It's the leftover of this part. The alpha over 2 is 0 0.04 because you're going to end up breaking the confidence interval 2. There's a lower bound and an upper bound. And so these values over here help determine how wide the confidence interval should be. And so if this is 92%, then these leftover parts are 0 0.04. So we go back to StatCrunch. Let me clear this out. We put 0 0.04 there. Compute 1.75 would be the answer for, for that one. So in this case here, Z alpha over 2 equals 1.75. You need to use the normal calculator to find these critical values. That's problems 9 and 10. Let's go ahead and look at problem 14. Problem 14 is asking us to find, determine the point estimate and the margin of error of each confidence interval and the number of individuals in each sample. Okay, so we're given um, um, this information so it's not a word problem it's just a context and so what a confidence interval again is some estimate if someone asks you to make an estimate what proportion of people believe in santa claus something like that you would make some estimate and we talked about in class that many times that you do a point estimate but if you do a point estimate many times your estimates are going to be your those estimates are probably wrong so it's more accurate to create an interval right an interval estimate versus a point estimate okay you don't have to write this down if you're looking for homework but um, I'm just as you're listening to you we have these two different things we have this idea of you just making a point estimate um, for the proportion of some uh, uh, population and then in this case, you have a lower bound of 
0.853 all the way to 0.871. So you're saying something is 85.3% to 87.1%, whatever that thing would be. And in this case, um, determine from here what is the point estimate and what is the uh, margin of error. So we have to understand what a confidence interval has a lower bound. So here is the, this is the lower bound. This is the upper bound of the confidence interval. We believe it's from 0.853 to 0.871, whatever it is. And then the point estimate is always directly in the middle. So how do you find your point estimate? To find your point estimate, it's just the average of those two values. So either you just figure that out or um, just do point that plus that divided by two, find the average of that. And then you have your value. So in this case, 0.862. So that is your point estimate. Your margin of error is going to be the distance from here to here. The distance from this point to this point. This is your, your error, your margin of error. In this case would be 0.871. You can just add it up, right? Just from there to there. That's 9 from here to here. Or, if you need a formula, just subtract those two, and you get 0 0.009. That would be your margin of, um, that would be your margin of error. And in this case here, uh, we could have also looked from the distance from here to here. That's your margin of error. I could have also done 0 0.862 minus 0 0.853 and got the same answer. You don't have to do both. You just got to do one. You don't have to get those. And again, if you're using my videos, you don't have to write both of those. I just want to emphasize that. And then the last question is, uh, and the number of individuals in the sample with a specified characteristic. So how many people have uh, this characteristic? We would then just take, you estimated that, times 10,000. There's no word problem, so these numbers are don't make necessarily any sense here, but because there's no context. That's problem number 14. Let's go ahead and do problem number 22. Um, this is where we're going to actually make a confidence interval. And so let's see what we got here. Um, USA Today Gallup poll asks 1,006 adults how much would be, how much would bother them to stay in a room on the 13th floor. Interest, interestingly, 13% said it would bother them. The margin error was three percentage points with a 95% confidence interval. So I'm going to write the information I know in this case. My, um, I'm going to write what I know here in this problem here. Oh, no, we're not solving anything. Sorry, we're just, which of the following represents a reasonable interpretation? So before we calculate confidence intervals, sorry about that, we, um, so what's being said here is that the, we have a point estimate of 0.13, a confidence interval of um, three percentage points, so it goes from 10% to 16 percent we believe uh, with 95 percent confidence so what we can say because the point estimate was here 0.13 that was your p hat your point estimate um, which of these is the best interpretation and so um, the answer the one that we say and it's in the book and i'd said in class this is how we say it we are 95% confident that the proportion of adult Americans who would be bothered to stay in a room on the 13th floor is between 0.10 and 0.16. Once we had our point estimate, 0.13, and our margin of error, we then could build the confidence interval from 10% to 16%. And so that's how you would interpret that. Um, the rest of these are flawed. This is not correct. Um, we are between 92% and 98% confident. You see this here is bad. Our confidence level does not change. So that's why this is bad. Confidence, confidence, oops. Your confidence level does not alter in this case. Confidence level, we are 95% confident, not 92 to 96. Confidence level, should not vary that's a, that's the issue here 95 percent of the samples um adult americans the proportion of who would be bothered stay in the room on the 13th floor is between 0.10 and 0.16 this is not right either um 
It's because the interval sets, uh, um, let's read this again. Um, in 95% of samples of adult Americans, the proportion who would be bothered to stay in a room on the 13th floor is between 0.10 and 0.16. Sounds it's very similar to this, but again, this is what we're, how we say it. We are 95% confident. Um, what's wrong with this is that this suggests, this suggests that this interval sets the standard for all other intervals which is not the case this is not true i know it sounds it's subtle but really we're going to be using this language here we are confident we are 95 percent confident depending on the confidence uh, interval that's how we say it and then the last one we are 95 percent confident that 13 percent of adult americans would be bothered to say um this here is uh not taking um your your margin of error not taking margin of error into consideration. You just get practice saying this. We are 95% confident that the proportion of adult Americans and so forth. Okay, let's move on to problem number 28. Now we're going to go ahead and construct a confidence interval. Um, family values, 768 of 10, 24 randomly selected adults stated that the candidates' positions on the issue of family values are extremely or very important to determine the vote for president. Okay, so that one value helps them determine the vote for president. Obtain a point estimate for the population, for the proportion of adults who, uh, for which the issue of family values is extremely important. So in this case here, we have a point estimate. In this case, our p hat is going to be 7, 768 divided by 1024. There's our point estimate. And so you get 0.75 out of that. Part b, it's a point estimate. But now, more likely, that's not correct. So we want to create an interval. Verify the requirements for constructing a confidence interval. In order to... to um, to actually be able to construct a confidence interval, we need to remember that n times p hat 1 minus p hat um, has to be greater than uh, 10. Has to be greater than 10. So if we put those values in, n is 10, 24 times 0 0.75, 0 0.25, it equals 192 which is greater than 10, greater than or equal to 10. So we're okay there on the check. Part C, construct a 99% confidence interval. So in this case, your alpha is 0 0.01. You need to find a critical value. We need to find the zero alpha over two. And so to find the critical value, Z alpha over two in this case, we need to go to stat crunch. You're going to put, if, let me clean this out here, and we want 0 0.01 divided by 2, so which is 0 0.05. And so in the 99% confidence, we're going to use 2.58. Um, we could also, remember, this is a 99% confidence interval, so we could use that, or we could have gone back to our notes from chapter 9. If we pull that up, I'm going to show you what table you could use. Remember, I gave you a confidence. Uh, let's find it here in our notes here from chapter 9. Uh, right here, when we do a confidence interval, we're going to use 2.575 as the value. That's our critical value, but you get that from um, StatCrunch also. So in this case here, your Z alpha is 2.575. We then have to go back to calculate uh, margin of error. So we have to go back to our equation. Where do we get error from? The equation for margin of error. Because remember, confidence interval has a confidence 
the confidence interval is p hat plus your error, p hat minus your error, right? Let me repeat that because the lower bound was first, so it should be p hat minus error, p hat plus error. So we need to calculate error. So what formula do we use for that? Let me remind you again from your notes. You have your note sheets out or you wrote this down already. To calculate error, I give you a formula somewhere. There it is. Here's your lower bound, upper bound. Your margin of error is critical value times your standard error, that square root there. So let's go ahead and finish that. So it's critical value. So to get this here, it's going to be your Z alpha over 2 times your, your P hat 1 minus P hat divided by N, 2.575. Need some more space here. Times square root P hat is 0.75 times 0.25. It's a leftover 100%. Uh, 10 to 4, so you get an, a margin of error of 0 0.348. There's your margin of error, and so then your confidence interval is going to be um, 0.75 plus, sorry, let's do the minus first. 0.75 minus point, 0.348, because th that was your point estimate. And I have to do this again, so it's 0. Point, so there's a point there, so it's point 0.0, so let's do this again. Point 0.0. Point seven minus point zero three four eight point seven five minus point zero three four eight and so you get point seven one five and then if you go point seven five plus point zero three four eight your new value is point seven Eight, five. So your confidence interval, we are 99% confident that those who um, um, will go from 71.5% to 78.5%, there is your confidence interval right there. Um, we are 99% confident that the proportion of Americans for which the issue of family values is extremely important to vote for president is between 71 and a half and 78 percent 78 and a half percent is it possible that the proportion of adult american aged americans for which the issue of value is extremely important is below is this likely is it below 70 percent the answer we would say for d is no it's it is not likely since it is not likely since the confidence interval confidence interval does not contain does not contain 70%. Actually, let me revise my answer here real quick. Um, I misread the question. Is it possible? The answer is yes. However, it is not likely. It is possible that 70 or this could be wrong, right? This was only 99% confidence level, so there's still 1% chance we could be wrong. So it is possible. However, it's not likely. And then to do a part E, construct a 99% confidence interval for adult Americans for which the issue is not extremely or very important. It's going to be the complement of this here. So for part E, the, com the confidence interval for those confidence interval 
going to come from over here. So for this one here, for those who are not, um, if you do 1 minus 0 0.7, 0 0.785, that equals 0.215, and 1 minus 0.715, that's going to be equal to 0.285. So your confidence interval in this case is going to go to, from to 0.215 to 0.285 because it's the converse, I mean the complement of this. This is those who say it's important, those who are not. So you don't have to do the full calculations. I can just use that to do that. Okay, let's move on. Let's go ahead and take a look at number 36. Okay, move to 36. To answer 36, we need these equations here to determine a sample size. Uh, to try to get some confidence interval, we need this. Um, we need this equation here. It would be n is equal to p hat one minus p hat critical value over margin of error squared. If we have a prior estimate for the p hat, if we do not have a prior estimate, then we use 0.25. Z alpha over 2E squared. So we have those. And so you just plug in for these. And for A, if you have a prior estimate, N is equal to, here's your P hat, 0.669 times the complement of, times the complement of that. And so 1 minus 0 0.669, you put 0 0.331 there, times this. So this is a 90% confidence. And so the critical value for a 90% confidence. Um, you either use stack crunch or we go back to our table here. The critical value for a 99 per 90% is 1.645. So that would be the Z value that we put there. 1.645. 1.645 all over. Um, within two points. So it's 0 0.02 squared and then you just calculate that value and that would be that would be our answer. And so the sample size we need is around 1499. And then for part B we're going to do the same thing. N is equal to 0 0.25 N times 0 0.25 parentheses 1.645 here because we don't have any prior estimates. 0 0.02 squared. Do that calculation. And so we're going to need, since we don't have enough information, we're going to need a bigger sample size to get a confidence interval with only 2 points, 0 0.02 error. And so that's how we do that. You just use one of those two formulas. One is if you have a prior estimate. The other one is if you have an estimate for the proportion. That's it.